What if I told you there was a person who made a YouTube video and all they wanted to do was help people out and they copped more dislikes than they did likes. And in the end, they ironically enough ended up being absolutely right with their video. And also I have to say thank you Red Eye Review for your video on Arctic Silver 5 versus uh, Gelid GC Extreme. This video helped me purchase the Gelid GC Extreme and give the results that I'm going to be presenting here today. Uh, but also besides that, I think it identifies some sort of a problem that I guess may exist still in the tech community, but we will talk about that later. Let's get on with the results first. So I bought a tube of this stuff, 10 grams. I think it's about 20 bucks off eBay. So it's not too expensive. The good thing about this thermal paste, just like Arctic MX4, is it's non-compacitive, non-conductive, so it won't cause any problems if you spill it. Uh, as opposed to Arctic Silver 5, which I've used in the past, it actually is slightly capacitive. So if you do spill some over the edges, your computer just may not simply boot at all. And I've had ex this experience in the past. Uh, but if you do use conductive thermal paste, then do be very careful with that because that could indeed uh, smoke up some parts. So what we've got on the test bench here is three different Gravis cards where I've done a little bit of before and after testing and the results are pretty conclusive. This thermal paste from Gelid, I was pronouncing it Gelid before, but I've since changed my ways is actually working pretty well. So let's find out how well it indeed works. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and there is actually a story behind this because what happened was initially I was looking uh, for answers because in my head there's this big backlog of all the things I've done in the past. It all gets cataloged in the back of the brain. There's all uh, cause and effect and reasons why and I've noticed in the past whenever I've had uh, some CPUs on different thermal paste they've overclocked higher than others sure it's not been a huge difference but I've noticed whenever I've used Arctic MX4 I've never got great overclocks I've never got one to say hey boys take a look at this I'm doing really well and of course you would put that down to hey silicon lottery man maybe just that piece of silicon is not performing as well as others and sure that is a valid argument but when you're using one different thermal paste and getting really good results and then you're using another over time, you sort of start to say, hey, am I missing something here? And so I started doing a lot more research and it wasn't until recent with the X5675 video that I did that I realized that that 4.5 gigahertz overclock, that came very easy. And it was the first time I haven't used MX4 in a long time. I actually used uh, Cooler Master's uh, Master Gel Pro. And so that got me thinking, I started doing a bit more research and then I came across this video from Red Eye Review where they compared the M Arctic Silver 5 versus the Gel GC Extreme. And what they found was there was actually quite a big difference. And first up we have the ASRock Phantom Gaming RX 580. Now when I put this initially to the test, I was going to do the review and I was gonna cut the B-roll and then I realized before I took the cooler apart, I was like, oh, make sure I test the out of the box thermals with the stock thermal paste, because that was important for this comparison. As opposed to the previous video uh, I did with the GTX 1070 Ti from Galax, I actually forgot to test that before I changed the thermal paste over. But ironically enough, when I tested and looked at Greg's scores, I got really low temperatures compared to him. So the uh, GC Extreme was working really well on the 1070 Ti Sniper that I had come through. And in fact, it was working so well to the point where I got a extremely high overclock in real mediocre ambient temperatures. So that was already one sort of proving factor that this thermal paste was working well. Uh, but moving over to the ASRock Phantom Gaming RX 580. This out of the box was scoring, uh, I think 78 degrees it got, 100% fan speeds on its max overclock. And then we changed the thermal paste around to GC Extreme, and that got 75 degrees. Not only that, it enabled us to get a very slight extra few megahertz out of the uh, GPU. So this was actually working pretty well, but if it's one thing, it already goes to show that ASRock are actually using some pretty good thermal paste on their GPUs, because in the next test, you'll find out why. And so the next GPU we have up here is the GTX 1070 Ti, Hall of Fame. Now this is a massive cooler. Three fans, triple slot. It's the big daddy of GTX 1070 Ti's. And it's coming to the table here, first off with Arctic MX4. Now I've used Arctic MX4 for years. 
And the reason I've used it is again, because of those qualities of not causing any problems if you spill it. It's also quite cheap. You can get like a 20 gram tube for relative, like I think I paid 14 bucks. And so you can just use it and use it, use it, use it, use it, and you're never gonna run out of this stuff. And so it was my go-to thermal paste before this test where it got 63 degrees, 100% fan speeds, and quite a sizable overclock of over 2.1 gigahertz. And then we changed over. We changed over to the Magic GC Extreme and it went down to 55 degrees. And not only that, I was then able to overclock it just a little bit higher. So we went from 2,114 megahertz max speed to 2,164. So that was a sizable gain, but we also got the temperature drop of eight degrees. And so this was on a 1070 Ti too. I believe if you had a 980 Ti or a 1080 Ti, the differences would be even more. But now back to the original video from Red Eye Review. When I watched this video, everything made sense. There was no shenanigans. There was no trying to hide anything. He displayed his motherboard temperatures. And from that, you could see that his ambient temperatures were very accurate. And also on top of that, he did what's called a Prime 95 small FFT test. This essentially stresses the CPU ridiculously hard. It's a very artificial non real world test that will, if especially in this case, you've got a four core eight threaded CPU, will put out a lot of power on a small surface area. And this is very important, especially when it comes down to uh, selecting which thermal paste will do better than others. So when I saw these tests, he essentially was showing that Arctic Silver 5 was inferior to Jell GC Extreme. And it all made sense because when I looked through his history of videos, this was just a guy who just simply wanted to help people. And yet when I looked at the video, the poor guy just copped more dislikes than he did likes. Yet there was no, he didn't trash Arctic Silver 5. He didn't say anything bad about their products. He just simply did his two tests and made a video to help people. And that's how people responded. So I, I tossed him a like. I thought he made a pretty good video. It helped me buy this thermal paste. And when I tested it here myself, I found some big differences. So what's coming out of this is basically GC Extreme is now my new go-to thermal paste because it's again pretty easy to use and it's pretty much similar in MX4. It, it spreads really easy but the temperature differences are actually quite sizable. So I hope this video helps some people out but if it's one thing if there's a problem that still exists in the tech community it's that just lose the fanboyism. I mean sure if he was trashing Arctic products or whatnot he would deserve a dislike but he wasn't doing any of that. He just did some tests and yet People hated on him because I guess they bought some Arctic Silver 5 or Arctic MX4 and thought, oh, you're showing that my product that I bought and paid money for is losing to something else. How dare you dislike? Yet, I'm sure going forward, that would have demotivated him to keep making more videos. But it all comes down to it. I've got my new favorite thermal paste here. And if something like this helps my 8700K now get to 5.1 gigahertz, that's an extra 100 megahertz. And... I guess that's an awesome thing. So if it can help people, then this stuff's really good. And I'm gonna be using it from here on in because I can't exactly use Liquid Pro or Conductor Nord. I just, I really don't like working with that stuff. Not only the fact that it's really hard to work with, but it's also conductive. So something like this, really easy to work with. It's provided with a little spread scoop as well. So you can spread it out everywhere. I love the spread method for reasons being that it's awesome. And that's another topic, I guess you'll get some people like, gotta put the P method on. No, don't do the P method. Just don't do it to yourself. Anyway, I'm out of here. I'm losing my mind. I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below what thermal paste are you currently using? What is your go-to thermal paste and why? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. But it all comes down to what I've got my new thing. Is it Gelid? Yeah, Gelid. Okay, Gelid. Gelid. Gelid Extreme. Gelid GC Extreme. Uh, uh, uh. There was a guy called Red Eye Review. Now, he made a video on Gelid. Gelid. <laughs> Gelid. 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 What if I told you there was a person who made a video on YouTube? Now I know what you're thinking, yeah. 
And of course there's people who make videos on YouTube. This is 2018. I think everyone's tried making a video on YouTube. <laughs> on when I'm doing these tests to keep it apples to apples. So I was really shocked to see that there was such a big difference when it came to higher power consuming uh, devices because an RX 580 won't consume as much power as a 1070 Ti, at least from memory it shouldn't. Wait, no, that's stupid. I think it does. <laughs> I think it does. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? 1070 Ti, it consumes about the same power overclocked. 